Okay, that's all. These are the call points. This is the IMO sign. And where are they placed? Generally near the exit of any area so that when you see a fire, you can hit it and just run out. And don't you think you've seen them at your office, shopping malls, restaurants? Yes, these are everywhere. Sometimes they are of this kind or they are just break the glass and push a button kind. One's right here at this exit at the stairwell, one right here at the exit towards the outside of the accommodation. Even the fire station has one. The next one, what I'm gonna show you is at the exit or entrance of the engine room. There are at the control room door exits at each and every other exit of the engine room as well. This is a door release knob. It's a magnetic door release knob that is an electromagnet and holds the doors back. Whenever the manual call points are pressed, this is what happens. And the doors go slam. They close by the door closure installed on them. So be careful with these doors. All the doors in the accommodation will shut that have this door closure. So this is the call point we're looking at. This one is inside the accommodation. Each of them will always be marked with the loop, the zone, and the address. That tells us on the fire panel which fire uh, call point, which manual call point has been activated. Symbol right here. This is what I'm talking about. This is the manual call point. I'm looking at the fire control and safety plan of the ship. So let's identify some of these guys. We had one right here. So here, can you see this call point? The other exit, other exit is here. So here, this is the call point that shows that it's placed here. Maybe let's go to the C deck. At the C deck, this is the exit, call point here. Exit on the other side, call point here. This is the engine room bottom floor plan. Call point here, just near the emergency exit. Call point here at the staircase going upward. Steering gear room, call point here near the door. This is the exit near the door. Since you've seen the location of the call points, the fire plan, now let's see the basic and the only maintenance on a call point is testing it or replacing it. Oh, how did I forget? Just replacing that broken glass on the front is also a maintenance procedure. Hi, Rex. Okay. Uh, what are we doing today? Yeah, we are changing the faulty manual call point for fire alarm system. Okay. And now we are shifting the address. Okay, so when, so when we change uh, a fire alarm or any Let's go, okay. When we change any specific electronic component, there are these things, small these switches called as dip switches. They need to exactly match the new one that you set into because this is like an address to the system. It tells this particular call point, help to tell its system that, okay, I am at X, Y, Z location. Two is down. Okay, two, three, eight down. Okay, this is a test device that we use uh, to test the fire, uh, the manual call point. Insert like this and then... It will click and then just pull it out. Pull. And when you pull it out, this is to test. This will activate the fire alarm. This is not to use. When you need to use it, you just push this button. This will break, I mean, push this glass and break the glass. Okay. Yeah, we pulled out. This is the one, the bottom cover, the tool. Yeah. And this is the glass. This is the glass, yes. If you look at the glass carefully, there, there is always a small crack right in the center that assists you to break the glass easily. Alright Rex, let's, let's put it up. So this is something that we, this was not there originally because we, ha we are having some moisture trouble with this one. So we will just place it in this. Yeah, we will have to put the glass also, right? Now we are installing the new front face of the call point along with the cover and the glass in it. You can follow this procedure also to replace the glass if you want. Pushing the glass in, it has to click. To push the limit switch inside. Yeah, so that the glass locks in. Yes, and we are in. So we'll show you how to test this alarm. Let us enable the fire detector and then we will test this manual call point. For now, right. Rex and me, see you soon. Okay, so now we are at the fire detection panel. From here, we will Enable the fire loop, the fire loop that we have disabled, we will just enable it here. Read each and every instruction in the fire detector panel. For, for example, here we have the Salvico panel. Read the manual and only then touch these parameters. Do anything if you're very sure, but please consult your chief engineer. Don't just do things on your own. Point is designed for dry area. Yes, so, so that manual call point, you can see there's no more alarms on the system. 
we had a uh, loop fault i mean a uh, loop failure in that system because that one had got salt on the circuit board which has led to internal damage like short circuit of that particular circuit board of the manual call point all right thanks a lot rex all right bye bye <laughs> ah, nice. now we will show you how we identified that particular detector was faulty meet raj the best eto i've ever known myself raj kumar yadav working as an electrical officer so today we are going to discuss how to troubleshoot a fire detection alarm system with my chief engineer hello sir here we have got a loop for the fire alarm detect detection system it has a number of detectors we can say like it is smoke detector we have got manual call point so we can say it is heat detector so we have got a loop fault so we can understand that these kind of loops are they are powered from both the sides this is this is the loop model which is powering this loop so it is a side and it is b side so this a side is also powering and b side is also powering under normal condition if we take out both these wires from b side or you can say a side still the loop will be working fine there will not be a, there will not be any problem but let's take an example that if we are getting any loop fault so with this we can see that uh, this uh, we can make we can do a loop check on the system with the loop check we can make out that this system is answering a side and some of the detectors are answering only b side however there is detector which is number 5 which is answering on both the a and b side. so with this uh, loop result we can see that the a side is not powering the loop after the detector number 5 or you can say if the b b side of the loop module is not powering the a loop after number 5 so for further troubleshooting we can take out any of these uh, loop wires you can say we can remove a part you can remove the positive and negative from this side and then then you can do the loop check again so with that half of the loop will not be working so we can make out the last de detector which is working and from that the power is not getting transmitted any further so we can pinpoint the fault so by checking the loop this way we can make out that there is a problem with the detector number 5 or maybe there is a cable break or there is a faulty detector or maybe a loose connection that is causing the problem thanks for the insight raj so now let's head back to the fire panel rex can we help us with the menu please uh we, first we go to menu all right and then uh you log number in six. As, yes we go to uh, zone to uh, service yeah. let's menu go, let's go in and then to loop number 5 And then uh, loop number one, two. Press two. number two. Press number two to okay, check so this uh, helps the status. Checks the zones. Like each fire detector is part of two, two uh, primary and secondary loop. Primary loop A and B. Right now both the loops are okay. If we have any trouble uh, in any particular loop, then you will have A and the B side blank or the B and the A side blank. So this will help us identify which detector or which loop in the detector is faulty. and that's how we can trace the particular detector in case sometimes it the fault keeps shifting uh, we will have to do something more rex can you open the panel once we open the panel this is for each loop and as we spoke about things there are two loops primarily primary loop is cable this first two cable the secondary loop is this a and b we take out the two cables from one loop and then we do this test again that test to help us pinpoint the exact detector But do not forget we are just not shooting in the dark here We've got our manuals here. We've read through the manuals, and only after that we can tackle the problem. So please read your manuals always. Uh, Chris, we will be testing that particular call point now. We have already put all the zones back to normal. We will be testing that call point, upper deck, fourth side. Do you have to make an announcement? Uh, just make a quick announcement. Just one short fire alarm, quick. Okay, so test the fire alarm. I've inserted my tool. Insert the tool completely. Let it lock in and pull it down. So now to put it back. Okay, it's gone back. Rex, can you reset the alarm? I'm done. Okay, Rex, you can test the alarm. Okay, I have my electric officer testing the alarm, and let's watch it here on the panel. Okay, uh, thanks, uh, Rex. Thanks, you're done. Okay, alarm reset. Bye bye. Take care. And as my Rex, my electric officer told me. Okay, one special message from Rex. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, and please don't forget to subscribe, all right? <laughs>